Hello all, greetings. Uh, this is Sureka from Department of Biochemistry. Uh, hope you people are staying safe at home. Uh, meanwhile, we'll see a lecture on fatty acid synthesis, fatty liver and lipotropic factors today. In previous class, we have seen uh, how the lipids are digested, absorbed and transported and get stored in our uh, system. Today, we'll see how the new chain of fatty acid that is de novo synthesis of fatty acid takes place in our system. This usually happens uh, when we consume excess of carbohydrate, amino acids and lipid. So what really happening is in the carbohydrate when we consume in excess, the carbohydrate undergo oxidation to yield more of pyruvate. Pyruvate in turn converted into acetyl-CoA. Similarly, the glucogenic amino acid, it forms intermediates of uh, TCA cycle. This in turn converts into acetyl-CoA. Similarly, the lipids when we consume it, those oxidation to yield more of your acetyl coa so these acetyl coas are the precursor for the new synthesis of fatty acids where the location of fatty synthesis is the liver adipose tissue kidney and lactating mammary gland these are the major organs responsible for the synthesis of fatty acids and this fatty acid synthesis is a biochemical process which involves many enzymes these enzymes are located in the cytoplasm of the cell uh, as, I said, as I said, the three main requirements uh, of fatty acid synthesis, first is your acetyl-CoA. The acetyl-CoA is just the source of your carbon atoms. So, the fatty acid is composed of a long chain of carbon atoms. So, this comes from your acetyl-CoA. And second is your NADPH. NADPH just, it just involves in the uh, providing the, uh, equal, uh, reducing equivalents to the fatty acid synthesis and this process requires energy which will be taken up as ATP. This uh, fatty acid synthesis is an important uh, detailed question. Actually, this may be asked in your examination. Uh, we'll see what are the stages of uh, stages involved in the fatty acid synthesis. Stage one is the production of acetyl-CoA and NADPH. Uh, for the synthesis of new fatty acid, uh, we require excess of acetyl-CoA and NADPH that we get from the uh, excess of uh, consuming excess of carbohydrate, protein and uh, lipid rich food. So these foods, uh, these uh, carbohydrate, uh, lipid, they undergo oxidation to give you more of acetyl-CoA and NADPH that in turn uh, divert your acetyl-CoA and NADPH into fatty acid synthesis. And stage 2 is the conversion of acetyl-CoA to melanyl-CoA. Actually, this stage 2 is the committed step in the synthesis of fatty acid. This is irreversible step where your acetyl-CoA gets converted into melanyl-CoA. This is a carboxylation reaction and this is the irreversible step. Once your acetyl-CoA gets converted into melanyl-CoA, melanyl-CoA will be committed to the synthesis of fatty acid and your acetyl-CoA will not be used back for the energy purpose. So the melanyl-CoA conversion is the rate limiting step or the committed step for the synthesis of fatty acid. And stage Stage 3 is the reaction of fatty acid synthase complex. This fatty acid synthase complex, it is a multi-enzyme complex. This involves various enzymes uh, for the production of real uh, chain fatty acids that we will see in the later slides. We will see in stage 1 first, the production of acetyl-CoA and NADPH. The acetyl-CoA is produced in the mitochondria by oxidation of uh, pyruvate and fatty acid and degradation of carbon skeleton of amino acid and from ketone bodies. So this acetyl-CoA cannot come out of the mitochondria. The mitochondrial membranes are impermeable to acetyl-CoA. So what is really happening is the acetyl-CoA gets condensed with your oxalic acid to form citrate. So that's how citrate can permeate across the mitochondrial membrane through a carrier system. So through carrier, the citrate can be taken to the cytoplasm where it gets split down into oxaloacetate and acetyl-CoA by the enzyme called citrate lyase. So again, the uh, oxaloacetate and acetyl-CoA can be utilized for the synthesis of new fatty acid. In order to maintain the oxaloacetate reservoir, the oxaloacetate has to be taken back into the mitochondria. So that will be taken by the enzyme 
uh, malate dehydrogenase which converts oxaloacetate to malate by utilizing NADH. Malate again converted into pyruvate by the enzyme malic acid, malic enzyme where you produce NADPH here. So the these uh, NADPH and uh, acetyl CoA are the two reservoir for the synthesis of fatty acid. So that we get during the uh, uh, production during the stage one that means the production of acetyl CoA from NADPH by the transport uh, system of uh, acetyl CoA from the mitochondria into the cytoplasm and the pyruvate formed again enter into the mitochondria through transport system and uh, again it gets converted into pyruvate decarboxylase into oxaloacetate so the oxalate uh, oxaloacetate reservoir gets maintained in the mitochondria it can again combine with uh, another acetyl coa and to form citrate by the enzyme cit uh, citrate synthase and can be taken uh, back to the cytoplasm this is how this acts as a cycle and uh, this in this is the stage one where uh, you produce more of your acetyl coa and nadph for the synthesis of fatty acid i will say stage two now stage two is the conversion of acetyl coa to melanin coa as i told you already this is the committed step where your acetyl coa gets converted into melanin coa and melanin coa gets committed to the uh, synthesis of fatty acid and this is the carboxylation reaction where the enzyme involved is acetyl coa carboxylase this enzyme requires biotin as a coenzyme so this biotin the role it does here is it just utilizes the bicarbonate uh, ion and just fixes uh, your carbon dioxide group to the acetyl coa and the resultant product formed is the melanin coa and this reaction involves atp that is the energy required uh, reaction this is actually so the energy uh, required in the form of atp gets split down into adp and pi resulting in the formation of melanin coa now we have come to stage 3 the reactions of fatty acid synthase complex previously we have seen stage 1 uh, the production of uh, acetyl coa and uh, nadph where how the acetyl coa gets transported from the as uh, mitochondria into the cytoplasm and how nadph is produced in stage 2 uh, we have seen uh, the committed step of acetyl coa to melanin coa in the synthesis of uh, fatty acid and in stage 3 we will see the reactions of fatty acid synthase complex uh, takes place in the cytoplasm this uh, this fatty acid synthase complex uh, is a multi enzyme complex it is present exclusively in the cytoplasm to uh, synthesize uh, fatty acid and here this uh, picture depicts the fatty acid synthase multi enzyme complex here uh, this picture this uh, enzyme it is a dimer actually this uh, dimer means it has got uh, two monomer chains they uh, one monomer each monomer consists of the seven enzyme activities and one acp molecule so here you could see uh, three uh, enzyme they perform condensation reaction and the two three enzyme they perform reducing reaction and one is the releasing enzyme so along with this seven enzyme you have also got acp uh, molecule and it also got sh uh, two sh active uh, group that is one will be in the acp phosphopanantherin uh, and other will be in the cysteine residue of uh, ketoacyl synthase so this sh group uh, tend to attach each other uh, to form a uh, active dimer so they they attach in the head to tail fashion so the they align in the head to tail arrangement so one sh group of acp uh, attached to the uh, sh group of uh, cysteine residue of uh, ketoacyl synthase and though, even though the seven enzymes uh, present in the monomer as a dimer only they are functionally active uh, when we separate the dimer into a monomer they uh, they won't be active enough to perform the catalytic uh, function of uh, fatty acid synthesis so they function as a uh, dimer and uh, they are complementary to each other and also because of the complementary in nature they can synthesize the fatty acid uh, uh, two fatty acids chain simultaneously this figure shows the synthesis of fatty acid uh, by the multi enzyme complex fatty acid synthase uh, you can also refer books at the narayana for better understanding of the image and in the in this image initially you can see the fatty acid synthase multi enzyme complex with the 
two active SH group, one in the cysteine residue and other one in the phosphopantothene of ACP molecule. The initial step they have not shown here, but the initial step is the addition of the two carbon fragment of acetyl CoA is transferred uh, to the ACP of the fatty acid synthase, which is catalyzed by the enzyme called acetyl CoA ACP transacylase. The acetyl unit is then transferred from the ACP to the cysteine residue of the enzyme, thereby the ACP site falls vacant. To the vacant the ACP site, the melanyl CoA ACP transacylase uh, adds the melanyl moiety from the melanyl CoA and the resulting compound are formed is acetyl uh, melanyl enzyme complex. This uh, from then on you can follow in this figure where uh, the three keto acyl synthase act on uh, the enzyme complex uh, resulting in the removal of carbon dioxide group from the melanyl moiety and also it adds, uh, adds the acetyl uh, fragment into the uh, ACP molecule to form three keto acyl enzyme. This is again reduced by the enzyme called three keto acyl reductase. Uh, here here it utilizes NADPH as a reducing equivalent. Uh, this uh, reducing equivalent adds the H plus atoms to the second carbon to form hydroxy acyl enzyme, which is again uh, catalyzed by the enzyme called hydratase. Uh, this results in the removal of water molecule from the second and third carbon. The resulting compound is 2, 3 unsaturated acyl enzyme. Here, the uh, double bond will be formed in between the second and the third carbon. This is again catalyzed by the enzyme called enoyl reductase. This enoyl reductase also utilizes NADPH as a reducing equivalent. Uh, thereby formation of CH2, the single bond CH2 will be resulting in and this structure is now called acyl enzyme complex. This is now uh, consists of four uh, carbon chain and in order to get a long chain carbon uh, atom, I mean uh, long chain fatty acid, the, uh, the cycle has to be repeated for several times. That means from A to B it has to be repeated. During the initial step you will be obtaining four carbon chain and uh, in order to get a long chain fatty acid, uh, you the, the cycle has to be repeated for several times. In case of palmitate, the cycle has to be repeated for seven times. In case of stearic acid, the cycle has to be repeated for eight times. So, so depending on the length of the fatty acid, the, ch the cycle has to be repeated. And at the end of the synthesis of um, uh, the uh, and at the end of the synthesis of the fatty acid, the thioesterase, the releasing enzyme, act on it and releases the new synthesized fatty acid from the enzyme substrate. Com I mean enzyme complex. The enzyme sub enzyme complex again can be utilized for the synthesis of fatty acid, where the new fatty acid will be released and can be uh, utilized for this st uh, storage of uh, and can be utilized uh, for the storage as a uh, Triacylglycerol. Right. This slide shows the regulation of fatty acid synthesis. The fatty acid can be regulated in four different ways. One is acetyl CoA carboxylase. It is a rate limiting enzyme. I told you already. And uh, this is uh, this activity. The activity of uh, fat acetyl CoA carboxylase can be enhanced by uh, presence of citrate. Uh, citrate increases the activity of uh, acetyl CoA carboxylase. Uh, this in turn converts the acetyl CoA into melanyl CoA. This is the rate limiting step where the melanyl CoA gets committed to the formation of uh, fatty acid synthesis and when you have excess of fatty acid already it can uh, feedback regulate the activity of uh, acetyl CoA carboxyl it can goes and inhibits the activity uh, directly and the second is the hormones hormones such as insulin triggers the activity of um, uh, citrate uh, lyase so that uh, there will be excess of uh, acetyl CoA production and also the insulin increases the utilization of uh, carbohydrate by the cells so that there will be increased production of acetyl CoA this will be diverted to the synthesis of uh, uh, fatty acid and third is the dietary regulation and also uh, the hormone other hormones such as uh, glucagon epinephrine can inhibit the uh, activity of acetyl CoA carboxylase thereby during the uh, starvation condition or if you, if you are deprived deprived of glucose uh, you you will not be able to convert uh, your available glucose into the uh, fatty acid so glucose availability will be utilized for the production of energy and it will not be diverted into the formation of fatty acid synthesis i mean formation of fatty acid and third is the dietary regulation where a high carbohydrate and free fat diet increases the fatty acid synthesis whereas fasting and you have a high fat diet already you are filled with the fats 
filled with a lipid source you will not be uh, able to your system will not be able to synthesize uh, fatty acids and third is i mean fourth is your availability of nadph uh, when you have more number of nadph uh, uh, during the transport of uh, acetyl coa and also during hmp shunt this will also trigger the fatty acid synthesis uh, pathway with the previous slide at the fatty acid synthesis and regulation gets over from now on we'll see the fatty liver it is a important uh, short notes five mark questions uh, the fatty liver and lipotrophic factors can be asked in your examination so we'll see what is fatty liver and i i told you the fats uh, the storage form of fat is triglycerides so it gets stored in the organ or a tissue such as adipose tissue liver is not the major organ where the fat gets stored only 5% of fat gets stored in the liver the if the fat gets accumulated with more than 25% it may leads to the fatty liver condition so what is really happening is the fat gets accumulated in the liver and it causes some fibrotic changes in the liver and it leads to the inflammation to the liver cells the condition now it is called cirrhosis and after that leading to the liver failure here the picture showing the normal healthy liver with uh, normal hepatocytes and uh, the other one showing the unhealthy liver with the increased accumulation of uh, lipids as a droplets uh, which is uh, which is uh, uh, which depicting the uh, fatty liver condition this slide shows the causes of fatty liver uh, there are two major causes for the formation of fatty liver one is the uh, fat, increased deposition of fat in the liver and second is the reduced removal of fat from the liver so the we'll see first cause that is the increased uh, fat deposition in the liver this may be due to two main reason one is mobilization of fatty acid from the adipose tissue when you have excess uh, mobilization of fatty acid from adipose tissue it gets accumulated in the liver and causes fatty liver and second is the excess synthesis of fatty acid from carbohydrate so when you have excess of carbohydrate or when you consume more of carbohydrate it gets uh, uh, automatically gets converted into fatty acid and gets accumulated in the liver this leads to the in, uh, fatty liver condition and second major cause is the reduced removal of fat from the liver uh, so this may be due to uh, two main reason one is the impaired synthesis of vldl vldl is nothing but very low density lipoprotein so very low density lipoprotein or vldl is involved in the migration of fat from the uh, liver to the other tissues so when you have a very impaired synthesis of vldl there will be reduced migration of fat from the liver to the adipose tissue so your fat gets accumulated in the uh, liver leading to the fatty liver and second uh, second reason is the decreased oxidation of fatty acids in the liver so the liver is a major site for the beta oxidation of fatty acid so when uh, when the oxidation uh, of fatty acid uh, does not takes uh, take regular does not take place regularly in the liver which leads to the accumulation of fatty acid in the liver this leads to the condition called fatty liver so when there is a increase in the factor 1 and 2 or decrease in factor 3 and 4 uh, can lead to the increased accumulation of fat leading to the fatty liver condition in this slide we'll see a more detail on the uh, major causes of fatty liver the first is the uh, increase the fat deposition in the liver this may be due to uh, excessive mobilization of fat and second is a excessive caloric intake or increased uh, production of fatty acid from the carbohydrate source so we'll see uh, one by one first uh, the first is excessive mobilization of fat so when you are uh, when you when when you are in the condition of diabetes mellitus and starvation the glucose will not be the major source for the production of energy so the uh, body depends on the lipid source where it is get stored in the adipose tissue so the, uh, the uh, lipid stored in the adipose tissue will undergo lipolysis to increases the uh, energy to increases the energy production to the system so the, the condition such as diabetes mellitus starvation increases the lipolysis in the adipose tissue thereby increases the migration of the uh, fatty acids from the adipose tissue so when you are increased uh, migration of uh, 
fatty acid from the uh, from the adipose tissue there will be increased the production of i mean increased presence of fatty acid in the blood circulation this in turn increases in the accumulation of fatty acid in the liver and uh, there will be like a increased accumulation of fatty acid in the liver is far higher than its excretion thereby the increased uh, fat from the adipose tissue gets accumulated in the liver and leads to the condition called fatty liver so the fat gets entered into the liver will not be excreted out uh, as vldl it will not be taken to other peripheral tissues uh, by uh, vldl so once the fat migrates from the adipose tissue it gets accumulated in the liver and uh, leading to the condition called fatty liver and second is excessive caloric intake so when you consume more of carbohydrate diet it it uh, it tend to form uh, it tend to form uh, as i mean fatty acid it, it just convert itself into the fatty acid because you have when you have excess of acetyl coa uh, it gets converted into the fatty acid synthesis so the, this in turn gets accumulated into the uh, liver and causes fatty liver condition and also fat diet when you consume more of fat it also causes fat uh, fatty liver and obesity may be accompanied uh, accompanied uh, uh, by the fatty liver uh, in this slide, we'll see the reduced removal of fat from the liver. Uh, this is another reason for the uh, fatty liver condition. Uh, previously, we have seen the increased deposition of fat in the liver causes fatty liver so how far the uh, deposition of uh, fat in the liver causes fatty liver is same as the reduced removal of fat from the liver can also leads to fatty liver condition this may be due to impaired synthesis of vldl vldl is a very low density lipoprotein which is synthesized in the liver for the transport of acetyl coa i mean uh, uh, triacylglycerol from the liver to the peripheral tissues usually the adipose tissue uh, the fatty acids from the adipose tissue will be taken up by the liver and esterified to triacylglycerol so the vldl produced in the liver carries this triacylglycerol from the liver to the peripheral tissues this is the role done by vldl and this requires phospholipid and apoprotein d so when you are impaired in the synthesis of vldl there will be a reduced migration of uh, uh, triacylglycerol from the liver to the peripheral tissues thereby leading to the condition called fatty liver this may be due to a defect in phospholipid synthesis a, a block in apoprotein formation and failure in the formation of secretion of uh, lipoprotein we will see one by one and uh, in the uh, next next coming slides in this slide, we will see a major cause for the impaired synthesis of VLDL that is defect in phospholipid synthesis because VLDL formation requires phospholipid and apoprotein B. So when you have defective in the phospholipid, this leads to the defective formation of VLDL that in turn leads to the reduced migration of triacylglycerol from the liver to the peripheral tissue thereby the triacylglycerol gets accumulated in the liver causes fatty liver. So, what are the major causes for a defect in phospholipid synthesis is, is the dietary deficiency of lipotrophic factors, uh, which includes uh, inositol, betaine, choline. These are all the different lipotrophic factors which, uh, which, involve, which, which we take up uh, through diet. So, when you are deficient with this lipotrophic factor, there will be a reduced production of phospholipid. This phospholipid is essential for the production of VLTL. So VLDL uh, production will also be impaired. This in turn causes fatty liver. And also the essential fatty acid uh, uh, fatty acid uh, deficiency can also lead to the reduced formation of phospholipids. So the fatty acid when we consume through diet, if we are deficient with that, can also lead to the efficient formation of phospholipid. And uh, the third reason is the increased consumption of cholesterol. When we consume more of cholesterol, this can compete with the essential fatty acid and impairs the phospholipid synthesis. These are all the three major causes for the, uh, the defective in the phospholipid synthesis, which is a uh, which is a major cause for the impaired synthesis of uh, VLDL uh, to, to VLDL, which helps in the migration of uh, triacylglycerol from the fat uh, from the liver to the peripheral tissue. So when you are impaired in the synthesis of VLDL, there will be a, a, a increased accumulation of uh, fat in the liver causes fatty liver.
The another reason for the uh, impaired synthesis of VLDL is a block in apoprotein formation. The apoprotein B is the another uh, important uh, precursor for the formation of VLDL in the liver. When the synthesis of uh, apoprotein is blocked by pyramycin, ethione, and carbon tetrachloride, chloroform, lead, phosphorus, when uh, upon consumption of different chemicals, uh, these chemicals can uh, block the synthesis of protein, that is apoprotein synthesis. When the apoprotein Synthesis gets blocked, there will not be availability of apoprotein B for the formation of efficient VLDL. So the VLDL cannot uh, uh, my, uh, it will, uh, cannot migrate the uh, triacyl glycerol from the liver to the peripheral tissue. So the uh, triacyl glycerol gets stored in the liver and leading to the condition called uh, fatty liver. So this is the second important reason for the um, uh, impairment of VLDL formation. This may be due to the uh, due to the involvement of chemicals uh, such as pyramycin, ethione, and carbon tetrachloride, chloroform, lead, phosphorus, etc. And the another uh, reason for the impairment uh, in the VLDL synthesis is the failure in the formation or secretion of lipoprotein. Lipoprotein is uh, required for the, uh, because the VLDL uh, is a very low density lipoprotein. It is, uh, the synthesis itself requires ATP, the energy dependent processor. So when you are uh, deficient with the ATP, uh, you won't be able to produce a efficient VLDL. So uh, this is made, this ATP deficiency mainly uh, happens in the condition when you have deficient with pyridoxin and pantothenic acid deficiency, which involves uh, which impairs lipoprotein formation, and also the ethionine. Ethionine we have seen in the previous slide it can inhibit the protein synthesis as well as it can compete with the uh, methionine and traps the available adenosine as adenosyl ethionine so that the ATP will not be available for the uh, lipoprotein synthesis thereby the VLDL that means a very low density lipoprotein will not be secreted. So the another important uh, factor involved in the reduced migration of fat from the liver is alcoholism. Uh, so the most common cause of fatty liver and cirrhosis uh, is in, in India is reported due to the alcoholism because the metabolism of alcohol uh, utilizes the oxaloacetate thereby it uh, depletes the uh, availability of oxaloacetate for the condensation of uh, uh, acetyl-CoA in and enters into TCA cycle. Thereby, the increased presence of acetyl-CoA diverted into the synthesis of uh, fatty acid, leading to the increased production of uh, triacylglycerol, and which in turn leads to the fatty liver condition. And apart from uh, the previously seen factors, there are various other factors such as deficiency of vitamin E and can also cause uh, fatty liver and also some of the hormones such as adenocorticotrophic hormone, insulin, thyroid hormone, adrenocorticoids. These are all the various hormones which stimulates the production of uh, fatty acid, uh, thereby leads to the accumulation of fatty acid in the form of triacylglycerol in the liver, which leads to the condition called fatty liver. And uh, this slide shows the uh, normal um, metabolism of fatty acid by the liver and the uh, for the various causes of fatty liver uh, condition. And this is the animated slide where first I have shown you the uh, formation of uh, sorry metabolism of fatty acid uh, by the liver. So when you consume a lipid rich food, uh, the complex lipid gets digested and absorbed as a simpler fatty acid. It gets esterified uh, uh, with uh, uh, glycerol to form triacyl glycerol and gets stored in the adipose tissue. When we require energy, the uh, triacyl gl uh, glycerol undergo lysis to form free fatty acid. This free fatty acid enters into the uh, liver to form acyl CoA. This acyl CoA is activated state where it gets entered into beta oxidation to produce energy. In other way, the acyl CoA gets esterified as diacyl glycerol or triacyl glycerol and it encapsulated into the nascent VLDL and gets transported to the other peripheral tissues because liver is not the site for the storage of triacyl glycerol. So, for the formation of VLDL, we require phospholipids, uh, ApoB. So the phospholipid uh, precursors are essential fatty acid and uh, lipotrophic factors such as choline and uh, cholesterol uh, is essential for the formation of nascent VLDL which helps in the transport of uh, triacylglycerol from the liver to the other uh, peripheral tissue. This is the normal pathway, normal metabolism of fatty acid in the liver. 
so upon uh, high fat diet and now from now on you can click one by one to see how the various factors influences the fatty liver condition so when you consume high fat diet which increases the increased production of triacylglycerol uh, which gets accumulated in the fat leads to the fatty liver condition and second is your diabetes and starvation these two condition increases the mobilization of fatty acid from the adipose tissue thereby increased accumulation of fatty acid or activated acyl coa in the liver leads to the uh, triacylglycerol formation or fatty liver condition and third is your uh, essential fatty acid and um, alcohol alcohol is the uh, condition where it uh, inhibits the beta oxidation or the beta oxidation of fatty acid the utilization of fatty acid by beta oxidation thereby the fat Fatty acid uh, will be diverted to the production of uh, increased triacylglycerol, leading to the fatty liver condition. And uh, fourth is your essential fatty acid deficiency or high cholesterol. The uh, dietary deficiency of essential fatty acid reduces the uh, formation of phospholipid. This in turn affects the nascent VLDL production. And also the high cholesterol competes with the essential fatty acid thereby leads to the uh, impaired synthesis of VLDL by reducing the phospholipid uh, precursor uh, for the formation of VLDL. And uh, next is your <coughs> Colon deficiency. The lipotrophic factor deficiency can also lead to the uh, impaired uh, production of VLDL. And also the other chemicals such as uh, puromycin, ethionine, and carbon tetrachloride. This chemicals inhibit the protein synthesis. Thereby, apoprotein B will not be formed. Uh, and thereby, the nascent or efficient uh, nascent VLDL will not be synthesized uh, or secreted for the uh, for the uh, transport of triacylglycerol from the liver to the other peripheral tissues. And uh, and also the uh, sec block in the secretion so when you have uh, block the membrane impairment can block the secretion of uh, nascent VLDL so the way, even though the nascent VLDL is secreted in an efficient way it can if, even though it encapsulates the triazole visceral it cannot be uh, taken to the other peripheral tissue due to the blocking secretion or uh, defect in the membrane so these are all the various causes for the fatty liver uh, condition the, these are all various condition uh, leads to the accumulation of fat in the liver, leads to the fatty liver condition. The another pathological feature of fatty liver is uh, cirrhosis, which can further lead to liver failure. So, but the fatty acid gets infiltrated uh, in the cytoplasm of the uh, uh, hepatic cells, where it pushes the nucleus to the side of the cell, and uh, there it gets disintegrated. And uh, this uh, condition is called cariohexis and can lead to the uh, lysis of hepatic cells. As a healing process, the fibrous tissue is laid down, causing fibrosis of uh, liver, and uh, this. Uh, further leads to the cirrhosis, which is the inflammatory condition of the liver. This inflammation, inflammatory condition of the liver further develop into the liver failure. And now we have come to lipotrophic factors. Lipotrophic factors will be asked mainly in your MCQs. And also it can be asked along with your uh, fatty liver uh, for five mark question. Here I told you already the deficiency of lipotrophic factors can lead to the accumulation of triacylglycerol in the liver leads to fatty liver. There are important lipotrophic factors are choline, inositol, betaine, methionine. These are all the, these four are very important lipotrophic factors uh, and uh, these are consumed through diet as well as the uh, to lesser extent, the folic acid, vitamin B12, glycine, lysine can also act as a lipotrophic factors. And this slide shows the role of lipotrophic factors in the prevention of fatty liver. Uh, the two main uh, component of uh, lipotrophic factors such as uh, Choline and inositol are the main component required for the synthesis of phospholipid. So the phospholipid in turn is required for the synthesis of effective nascent VLDL which helps in the transport of fatty acid, I mean uh, triacylglycerol from the liver to the peripheral tissues. The other lipotrophic factors are directly or indirectly involved in the transmethylation reaction to synthesis choline and also the conditions such as uh, Cauchy occur. Uh, during this condition, uh, there will be an increased possibility of fatty liver. This is due to the insufficient supply of uh, amino acid methionine. Uh, because the s adenosyl methionine, a methyl donor, uh, it's, it's a very well known methyl donor. This methyl donor involved in the transmethylation reaction due to the unavailability or non availability of methyl group. Uh, uh, methyl group, the, there will be a uh, chance in the formation of fatty liver. 
and uh, this uh, slide shows you the colon deficiency and its uh, effectiveness in the formation of uh, fatty liver so the colon deficiency decreases the phospholipid synthesis which in turn impedes the vldl formation thereby uh, reduced the migration of uh, triglyceride from the liver uh, leading to the fatty liver condition and also the colon deficiency impedes the function of lipoprotein membrane formation uh, during the secretion of the uh, vldl uh, the membrane will not be formed uh, properly due to the uh, deficiency of colon this may also leads to the fatty liver condition and third and fourth is the uh, reduced synthesis of carnitine due to insufficient supply of uh, methyl uh, groups and the impairment in fatty acid oxidation so uh, due to the insufficient of methyl group the carnitine cannot perform its function the role of carnitine is to transport the fatty acid from the cytoplasm into the mitochondria where it gets oxidized in the mitochondria uh, leading to the production of energy so during the insufficiency of methyl group the carnitine cannot do its function so what is really happening is the fatty acid gets accumulated in the uh, cytoplasm leading to the fatty liver so uh, due to the inner inefficient insufficiency of methyl group uh, it also affects the carnitine and also the fatty oxidation oxidation is impaired thereby leading to the fatty liver condition